Hold it, man. Hold it. What? Wait. What the fuck is this kid doing in here? Get the hell out of here before I kick your little ass. Well, when you're right, you are right, man. Uh, as predicted, Art to Better Be was the guy that I had winning this thing. And uh, yeah, and the new undisputed uh, light heavyweight champion of the world, Art to Better Be. Now, he didn't get it by knockout. I had the knockout being between 9 and 12. But, bruh, he was so close. He was so close, man. You had uh, Demetri Bivar. On um, resulting to some dirty tactics between 10 and 12, bro. He holding, he putting his forearm on Arthur Better Beeb's neck around like round 11, bro. He held uh Better Beeb so long that Better Beeb just, just like basically hung there for a second. He had his hands on the ground, like the dude holding me. Like it's weird, like bro. Let let me go, bro. Can I can I punch you this time? You've been punching on me the whole fight. Now you want to hold? Like it was just a little dirty stuff he was doing towards the end of the fight that lets me know, bro. If he wasn't doing that, he was going to go to sleep. So uh, yeah, in so many words, man, to see Arthur better be with his hand held high with that championship gold in his hand, man. I ain't gonna lie, it's it's kind of uh, it's kind of cool to see, but to a certain degree, man, I feel incomplete, bro. I ain't gonna hold you. Like I know I'm right, and I should be like jumping for joy, right? I'm I'm right, but uh, nah, bro, it don't feel like it though. Like you know what I'm saying? Like it don't feel like it, bro. Um, because to me this was a draw. I ain't gonna hold y'all, bro. This fight was a draw. If you ask me, this fight was a draw. And here's the reason why I'm saying that. This is how I scored it. So I had uh, Demetri Bivar. He won round one, two, and three. All right, Arthur Better Beef didn't really get out of the gate until round four. He wins round four, five, and six. All right, Bivar runs out of gas a little bit, but he took a round off at round five. He still got back in at round six, and he lost that round as well, but he did a little bit more moving around, a little bit more running around like he was in the earlier portion of the fight. So I give round six to Arthur Better Beef as well because Bivar didn't really land any gloves. Actually, he threw a uh, little to no punches in round six. Then you get round seven, round eight, and round nine. It, the, all three of those rounds, in my opinion, went to Dimitri Bivar. Those three rounds went to Bivar. So you have six to three right now. And uh, the last three rounds, in my opinion, rounds 10, round 11, and round 12, all goes to Arthur Better Be. And uh, so basically, to me, it was a draw, right? That's just how I see it. It was a draw. Now, there are certain factors that play into maybe Arthur Better Be did win it. Now, do I agree with the scorecards? Heck nah, bro. I think them scorecards was trash, to say the least. To say that Bivar lost by four rounds, that's kind of trash. But when, when, we, when we talk about some of the stuff that I've seen, maybe I can understand why they gave it that wide of a margin. I mean, it's still kind of hard to understand, but we'll talk about it. Uh, the three rounds is also trash. I kind of agree with the first uh, judge's scorecard, right? Uh, the 114-114 scorecard, that was lit to me. That was lit to me because that's what I seen. It. I thought it was a draw. But saying that to say, um, maybe they gave it to Arthur Better Be for two reasons. One, right, uh, being that Demetri Bivar, he ran, bro. He ran from that smoke, bro. It started off really, really well. Like, the way that he fought, bro, that was, in my honest opinion, that was the only way I seen him beating Arthur Better Be was to let his fist go, bruh. Because we know uh, Demetri Bivar to hang back. He's always comfortable. He He's never really, like, rattled in any way, shape, form, or fashion. He's never overwhelmed. Um, he hangs back into his stance. He makes it difficult for you to hit his head. And uh, he works off his jab. Um, I thought that was going to be a stupid game plan to go up against a guy who's going to be pressuring you all night and who got who got power in both fists, a guy who can really crack. So you got to let your fist go, bro. You can't be sitting there uh, uh, being a, a deer in headlights waiting for this guy to punch on you like most uh, counter punches and boxers do, right? They want to wait on you to punch so they can counter punch, right? I'm like, he can't do that with Arthur Better Be. He needs to be swinging his fist, which is exactly what he was doing, bro. Uh, you get the first few rounds, he started off just letting his jab go, 
and trying to bait Archer Better B to let his uh, hands go. Once Better B lets his hands go, then you get uh, Bivar letting go a combination or two just to try to get more punches on the um, the, the scoreboard than Archer Better B. And it was working until Archer started to catch on to what he was doing. Uh, saying that to say, um, he ran so much though, right? Uh, you got one guy just bringing on this pressure, bringing on the pressure, bringing on the pressure, and the other guy... He's stopping here and there to get a, get off a bunch of combinations. But you got to think about all of the time uh, that he was wasting just running away from Archer Better B. And it was weird, bro. Um, like, half of the fight happened, right? And uh, they had put up the initial uh, punch stats, right? Um, I think it was like round seven. They had put up the punch stats uh, in round seven to say that I think by that time, Better B had swung like close to 500-some punches. Right, but he ain't land nothing but like a hundred something. And I think um Bivar had let go of like uh three hundred or so uh punches and he had scored about a hundred plus uh punches as well. I was like, Man, you know what it'd be fun if they uh had how many steps they took <laughs> in the round, how many steps they taken in the round cause uh Bivar would have had a ton of steps more than Archie Better B, but I just said that to be funny, bro. But saying that to say um, another thing that Bivar did that's kind of questionable was dirty taxes when it came to clinching. It got really bad towards like uh, 10, 11, and 12, bro. He was like holding uh, Better Beef down with his forearm on the back of Better Beef's neck. It was one point in time where he held Better Beef so long the ref had to come and break it up. Like you can tell he was more so in survival mode. Uh, towards 10, 11, and 12, those three rounds, he was in survival mode, bro. And I think if he's not clinching, he goes to sleep. That's just my opinion. Y'all can take it with a grain of salt. Do I agree with the scorecards? No, bro. I don't agree with those scorecards. Those scorecards were trash. Uh, 112 to uh, 116, that's trash. You can't say that better be one four rounds over uh, Bivar when he had a hell of a, a, a time just getting out of the gate. Uh, in this fight uh the 115 113 also was kind of fishy to me um because i don't have uh better be in a comfortable seat better be didn't even think that he was in a comfortable enough seat to say that he won the fight now he did say he thought that he won yeah of course most fighters would in a war like that right but uh to say that he was in that much of a comfortable seat a three five a three round comfortable seat a four round comfortable seat get out of here bro that's crashing itself but i do think that bivar had a, a legitimate enough fight to say that he won this fight i do think that Archer better be had a legitimate enough uh rounds to say that he won this fight as well which is why i labeled it a draw i mean i get it bro i'm right i get it i'm right no 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 shade thrown right um one of the only guys on the 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 internet who rooted for a better be to win this fight i put it in my prediction show and i was right but I don't want to be unfair either. Like, you dig what I'm saying? I don't want to be unfair. I don't want to sit here and make it seem like this is a, a moment to celebrate, bro. Uh, let's keep it a bean. They both should have left with their championship belts. Um, and we should have done this again uh, in the near future. Um, I don't know what's going to happen next. I would love, if like, if this doesn't have a rematch, which it should. Um, but right now, it's going to take them getting into the office and have a little bit of negotiations going on between uh, top rank and Eddie Hearn, but uh, saying that to say, uh, if this just this just my opinion, if this doesn't go to a rematch, I would love to see Ja Opatea and Dimitri Bivar, brother. Dimitri Bivar we seen uh, today, that Bivar we seen today, that's a that's a rare B Bivar, bro. He let his fist go. He definitely got power in both hands, bro. You can't sleep on his power, bro. Anymore, if you do sleep on his power, you can't sleep on his power. I know I kind of slept on his power a little bit. I thought he was more so defensive and, and that jab. But, bro, he's special. He's a special breed for sure, bro. No BS when, when it comes to that. I would love to see him and Opatel. Did y'all see Opatel close that fight, bro? Did y'all see that? Bro, Wardley. That Wardley fight, bro. That was crazy, too, bro. Man, God damn. This, uh, this fight card in itself was pretty lit. Scott Nicholson uh, agrees to seeing Tiara Brown. So, Tiara Brown will get a championship title fight. That's lit in itself as well. Chris Eubank Jr. with the six-round close. Like, come on, man. I mean, the WWE stuff between him and Conor Ben 
it, it, it was kind of cheesy because we seen it coming, right? Um, if Connor Barron and Chris Eubank Jr. didn't have that scenario in the uh, in the hallway during uh, the weigh-in uh, ceremony, right before the weigh-in ceremony, I think it would have been a little bit more lit to see him get into the ring. Uh, and it could have been a little bit more of a surprise for the whole world. But to see it happen two days in a row is kind of cheesy the second day if they're making sense to anybody. Um, but it is what it is, man. Shout out to both Dimitri Bivar and Archie Better B. You guys gave us a hell of a show, bro. Um, in my honest opinion, um, Frazier Clark and, and Wardley, they might get fight of the year um, because round 13 was crazy for those two guys. But if you really ask me, man, it possibly should be Arthur Better Beaver and Dimitri Bivar, bro. That was crazy. That was a crazy fight, bro. If you had your money on it, I know you was sitting on eggshells majority of the night watching that fight, bro. So it just it is what it is. I do think that they both left it all in the ring. And uh, it was a really good night, bro. But um, to say I'm right and just gloat and say I'm right, I mean, it is what it is. I could do that. But I also think that uh, Dimitri Bivar won this too. So that's why I said it's a draw. So I'm, I'm going to still put this in my win column, right? Because technically, uh, if Bivar really won it, he get the knockout. He's supposed to knock out better B. That's the only way to really lead the fight out of the judges' hands, right? That's the only way to do it. You got to knock him out. Uh, saying that to say he didn't he didn't get that to happen today. So technically, I'm going to put this in my win column. Although I do kind of feel for Bivar right now, bro. He, he did the best he could. He left it all in the ring, and uh, he didn't get nothing to show for it, bro. At the end of the day, especially when if you look at it at face value, none of us can really say that he lost that fight, bro. But this is Fist Factory. I'm your host, Neff, and I'm signing out. Got to ask you guys, what do you think about the fight? Did you have it or draw? Did you have it for Bivol? Did you have it for Better B? Um, leave that in the comment section below, and I'll talk to you guys about that in the comment section, bro. But again, this is Fist Factory. I'm your host, Neff, and I'm signing out. Oh, yeah, before I go, Ben Whitaker. Ben Whitaker is cap. All right, that guy is cap. I don't want to hear nothing else about Ben Whitaker being that lit at 175 pounds, bro. That's cap. I don't think he was hurt. I think he didn't have a game plan to beat this guy that he was fighting. And uh, they they uh, went over the ropes um, and that little uh, scenario played out. And then he, he cowered out. He didn't want to get back up and fight. So that way he can go back to the drawing board, go back to the lab, and try to come back and do something better the next time around. But that's what you get for taking people lightly when you're thinking you miles ahead of people and you're not doing your proper research. You're not uh, watching film. You're not watching them fight. You're going into the training facility and you ain't really busting your behind. And then you get somebody in the ring who's not scared of you, somebody in the ring who has a little bit to offer somebody in the ring who has a tough chin and somebody who got power in their fist and now you want to act like you hurt, bro. I think that's just trash in itself uh, to say the least. But this is Fist Factory, man. I'm your host, Neff, and I'm signing out. The, the card was good. I think Ben Whitaker was the only letdown of the night. Y'all take it easy, eh, bro. Peace. Brawl Night Champions for members only. Party chat debate for a shot at the community board champion. But remember, it's a fight, so don't get knocked out and lose your place in the ranks. Or if you're just here to be a part of the spectacle, that's cool too. Sign up for the first tier to get front row seats to each event and get exclusive content not seen on YouTube. No mods here, but don't get kicked out. See rule books for more details. Oh yeah, ladies and the legends are included if you want to spectate or go for some gold. Brawl Night Champions, sign up now.